to another tutorial for the Edexcel Further Pure 1 Math Syllabus. This is the third video for Numerical Solutions of Equations. Looking at the scheme of work, we talked about the change of sign rule firstly, and then we learnt the interval bisection method. Now we're going to learn a method called linear interpolation. To introduce it, I'm going to do the exact same example as I did with the interval bisection method. So I'm going to show you how to do the same question just using a different method. You'll remember the questions always start off, show there is a root in, the in, in some interval, and we've done this part already. So show there is a root to f of x is equal to x squared subtract 11 in the interval 3, 4. And then we're going to find this root to one decimal place using a different method, namely linear interpolation. Just take a second to show that there is a root between 3 and 4. We have done this in the previous video. And just revealing the answer there, uh, we had done this before. You um, substitute 3 into the function, substitute 4, show there is a change of sign. As the function is continuous, there is a root between 3 and 4. We're done. OK, now let's focus on the point of this video, finding this root to one decimal place using linear interpolation. Let's just quickly graph the function uh, as we did previously. We know now there is a root between 3 and 4. So 3 is here and 4 is here. We know there is a root somewhere between x is 3 and x is 4. As we did previously, I'm just going to focus on this section here, zoom right in and draw a picture to represent that. Section, we would have something that looks a little bit like follows. Here is the uh, coordinate, uh, here is the point x is 3, here is the point x is 4, here is our function x squared subtract 11. It's not entirely accurate sketch, but it is a representation of what the situation is. Now we know f of 3 was negative 2. When we put 3 into the function, we get negative 2, so this coordinate is 3, negative 2. We know when we put 4 into the function, we get back 5. So we know this coordinate must be 4, positive 5. So, as we knew previously, between x is 3 and x is 4, the function is continuous. The function takes a negative value at 3, positive value at 4, therefore there is a root in between. Linear interpolation does the following. It imagines there is a straight line connecting 3, negative 2, 4, 5. There is a straight line connecting this value here and this value here between our change of sign namely and then it says a decent approximation to this root here would be the point where this line here crosses the x-axis and I'm going to call that say x1 so a decent approximation for that point would be that x value and it uses a very simple idea of similar triangles to be able to find this x1 and hence get us an approximation to this, our actual root, which I might call alpha. So what it does is as follows. It imagines there is a triangle here. That's a triangle. And it imagines another triangle, this side, here. By symmetry, this triangle must be similar to this triangle. They share all the same angles. They share that angle, that angle, because vertically opposite angles are equal. They both have a 90 degree, and that angle must be the same because they must add up to 180. If the triangle has all the same angles, the sides must be um, in a ratio to each other. There must be a scale factor linking the sides. The triangles are similar. So, what the method does, step one, it says, therefore, that the height of this triangle divided by the height of this, so I'm going to say, I'm going to call it height of larger triangle divided by the height of the smaller, the, the ratio between the heights must be the same as the ratio between the widths. So it must be the same as the width of the large divided by the width of the small, i.e. they share a common scale factor. Now what's the height of this triangle here? Well, it's height 5. 
so 5. What's the height of that triangle there? Well, it goes down to negative 2. Height, let's just think of everything in positive. The height is therefore 2. So 5 divided by 2 must be the scale factor. And what's the width? Well, that point there it is x, uh, x is 4. This point there is x1. We don't know it. So the width must be 4 subtract x1. So the width of the larger must be 4 subtract x1. And what's the width of the smaller? Well, x1 is a bigger number than 3. It must be x1 subtract 3. And then you now have an equation which you can solve for x1. And you can find a half-decent approximation to this root. So if I multiply both sides by 2 and multiply both sides by x1 subtract 3, I would get 5 x1 subtract 3 would be 2 times 4 minus x1. Expanding the brackets, 5x1 subtract 15 would be 8 subtract 2x1. Collecting all x1s together, add 2x1s to both sides, add 15 to both sides, I would get 7x1 would be equal to 23, and therefore x1 would be 23 over 7. And that is my approximation for x1. 23 over 7. Now we're not done now. We have to find the answer to 1dp. I don't know if this is a correct answer to 1dp. I know it's my first guess. When you have done that, it's very important you then work out the function evaluated at 23 over 7 or the function evaluated at x1, let's call it, which would be f of 23 over 7. Because here, this is our value of x1, we're guessing. We want to work out the coordinates uh, of the or the value of the function at x1. So we would substitute 23 over 7 into um, the function and see what we get. So we would do 23 over 7 squared, and then we would subtract 11, and we get negative 10 over 49. So this would be equal to negative 10 over 49. So this coordinate here would be equal uh, to 23 over 7, negative 10 over 49. And there you go. We have got um, a coordinate here. Now, this is not the actual root. You can see it's not the root. But we know that there is a change of sign between uh, 23 over 7 and 4 because it changes from negative 10 over 49 to 5. So I can now do the same thing in a step 2 that I just did previously with similar triangles to try and work out a closer approximation to alpha. Now one little tip when doing this. This helps a lot, I find. If you use your scientific calculator well, what you can do is this 23 over 7, you can call it a letter on your calculator. You can press um, shift, store, and then this button here, A. So if you press shift, store, it makes that uh, 23 over 7 be the same thing as A. And you do the same thing with this value here because we're going to use it in the next step. But call it B instead. So press shift, store, B. And that would be the point B. And later on, it will make our calculations a whole lot easier when we're not dealing with horrible fractions and decimals. We can just use A and B on the calculator. Okay, so let's move to the, the next idea then. And let's do one more step of this here. Let's draw out a picture to represent what we're doing. We know now that 23 over 7 and negative 10 over 49 is somewhere here. So we have got ourselves um, something like that. That's our curve. This point here was AB, 23 over 7, negative 10 over 49. So 23 over 7, negative 10 over 49, which we have stored on our calculator as AB. And the change of sign, this uh, here, 4, 5, we're going to use as our other value because we need a change of sign each time. So 4, 5 is there. 
Remember what we do? We draw a straight line between them. We're now going to call this one x2. That is going to be our approximation to this alpha. And we're going to use similar triangles. The height of this triangle is 5 divided by the height of this triangle, which is 10 over 49, but I'm going to call it b. I'm just going to use b for now because I've stored that in my calculator. It must be equal to the width of this triangle. Well, the width of this triangle uh, must be 4, subtract x2, divided by the width of this triangle here, which must be x2, subtract 23 over 7. But again, don't use 23 over 7. Use the a value. So x2, subtract, uh, subtract a. Now, before I go in and try and um, uh, type in values, etc., keep them in terms of a and b for now. Watch how much simpler this makes it. Multiply both sides by b, multiply both sides by x2, subtract a. I'll do it in one move. You would get 5x2, subtract 5a, is equal to 4b, subtract b, lots of x2. Keep, bring all the uh, x2 lots to one side and bring everything else to the other. So add bx2 to both sides, add 5a to both sides. You would get 5x2 plus bx2 is equal to 4b plus 5a. Okay, now you could factorise that out x2. x2, 5 plus b is equal to 4b plus 5a. And therefore x2, my guess at x2, is 4b plus 5a, all divided by 5 plus b. And that, although it looks fairly complicated algebra, is so much easier than dealing with decimals. All I have to do now in my calculator is type 4 lots of b plus 5 lots of a, divided by 5 plus b, and then I get my answer. So 4 lots of Uh, 4 lots of b plus 5 lots of a all over 5 plus b using the recall button this time you would get yourself x2 is um, 153 over 47 which is equal to 3.25 and just looking back at what we got previously, x1, I should have worked this out previously, x1 was 23 over 7, which is 3.29. Now, this to one decimal place, the question asked me to one decimal place, is 3.3. The next value I've got, that to one decimal place, is also 3.3. Because x1 and x2 have now agreed to one decimal place, my approximation for alpha will be 3.3 to one decimal place. So just going back here, although I kept things as a fraction, I should have just worked it out, decimalized, just so I can keep track of what decimal is. And when I keep going working out future x's, x2, x3, when, the, when two consecutive uh, approximations for x agree to one decimal place, that is then my answer. And that is the linear interpolation method. One for you to try yourself. I'm actually only going to get you to do one uh, attempt at the linear approximation method. One step. So here's the question. It gives you a, a slightly strange function, but it tells you there's a root between 2 and 3. And it asks you to use the endpoints and linear interpolation one time to find the first approximation to this root alpha. So just do it once. Don't do it several times until it agrees. Just do it one time and see what you get. Pause the video, attempt the linear interpolation once, and then I'll show you the answer in 10 seconds. And showing the answer here, this is what the answer should have been. If you had put 2 into the function, you get negative 1. Put 3 into the function, you get 12. There's a change of sign, so you know there is a root between uh, 2 and 3. So you draw a straight line between them. Using similar triangles, the height of this triangle divided by the height of this is 12 over 1. Must be the width of this triangle divided by the width of this, which is 3 subtract x1 over x1 subtract 1. Multiply everything out and work out x1 
is 1.15 to 2 dp. That is one approximation using a linear interpolation. If you had to go on and actually prove that the result was accurate, let's say to 1 or 2 dp, you would have to find x2, x3, x4, however many x's it takes by doing this over and over again until the decimal places agree to the, uh, the value you've been asked. So if you were asked to find the answer accurate to one decimal place, you would keep going until an x, say 3 and 4, agreed to one decimal place and stop at that point. And that is all. So to consolidate this, uh, there's a lot of questions to get on with. Read page 35 to 37 and look at the examples and do exercise 2b on page 37, all the questions. Then tune in for the next video on the Newton-Rapson method. Thank you for watching.